put these three curves together, the IS curve, the LM curve, and this full employment relationship into the same graph so that we can start to analyze some changes that might uh, take place in, a, in the economy. So just as a, just to reinforce, the IS is the combinations of interest rates and output such that the goods and services market are equilibrium. LM curve is when the money market and asset markets more generally are in equilibrium. And FE is showing us the full employment level of, uh, of output, essentially where the labor market uh, is in equilibrium. So I want to uh, take into account uh, two different effects, but where we will allow prices to change. Uh, and this is going to be in contrast to uh, what we talked about in an earlier version. So let's, for example, have a positive technology shock. And what do I mean by that? That would be, for example, the uh, innovation in computer technology or internet uh, technology that makes the economy more productive. If you go back and you look at the, um, uh, the another video, what you'll see is that this change would result in the full employment level of output increasing. With more productive labor, with more productive capital, the economy has a greater capacity to produce goods. And so let's, so FE shifts to the right, and let's imagine that we continue to focus on point A, which is where the goods market and um, a money market are in, in equilibrium. Well, this is not a general equilibrium. They're not all, all three of these curves don't meet. So what uh, changes? Well, this positive technology shock is going to result in output being below the, uh, the maximum possible output that will tend to lower prices. Prices of the goods will fall as technology has improved. Okay, prices will fall. Now, if you go back and look at the other video, what do you see when prices fall? That is going to change the LM curve. The effective money supply has increased because the price level has fallen. So what you have is a shift out of the LM curve because prices fall and the real money supply increases, lowering the real interest rate and getting a kind of virtuous cycle. Now it's a movement along the IS curve. Okay? You, as, the, as real interest rates fall, that's going to allow uh, more production to occur, more investment to occur as a consequence of the, uh, uh, of the, lower, of the lower interest rates. But here is a kind of virtuous cycle, if you will. The positive technology shock results in an increase in the growth in the, the economy. Okay. So that's, a, um, that's one way to use this uh, framework. Now the other one that I want to talk about is an increase in the nominal money supply. That would be a expansionary monetary policy Again, we'll talk about full employment output. We've got the original LM curve. We've got the original IS curve. 
And let's start out, for example, that you're at full employment. Okay, so you're really at capacity. And the central bank decides to increase the money supply, the nominal money supply. If you go back and you look at the things that would shift, that increase in the nominal money supply will shift the LM curve to the right. lowering the uh, real interest rates and at least temporarily increasing output beyond the full employment level of output. Uh, now, one thing to note here as you do these kinds of analyses, um, I would always look where the IS and the LM curve meet. Okay, that's, that's the one that, that will uh, help you uh, uh, do the analysis. So as we increase uh, the money stock, you do see an increase in, in output. But then the question is, what happens to prices if you're pushing beyond the full employment level of, of output? That will tend to increase The price level. If you just if you double the amount of uh, currency in circulation, that will tend to raise the prices. Well, what uh, now ch uh, uh, is uh, occurs? The increase in the price level is now going to affect the LM curve. Now, recall that we start out. I use a different uh, uh, pen here. We start out with an increase in the nominal money stock through a, a central bank uh, intervention. That then shifted the LM curve out. The increase in the prices associated with pushing beyond full employment level of output will tend to raise prices. That shifts the LM curve back to the original level of real interest rates and uh, output. So what you get with the with the, the the monetary expansion just by itself is a temporary increase in output, which translates into inflation. Now, one of the things that we've talked about already is that the differences uh, among economists about how effective, for example, money uh, monetary expansion is, is how quickly. People believe this increase in price level will occur. If you have a, uh, a very quickly changing price and wage um, re response to an increase in the money supply, you'll have this shift back uh, relatively quick quickly. That's sort of a classical economist, macroeconomist view of looking at this. A Keynesian would say that actually can take some time so that you can have a uh, an increase in output without the consequent increase in prices uh, for some time and so that this monetary expansion would be an effective uh, approach. So in both of these, this is the technology shock and the uh, change in the, mo in, the, uh, in the money supply, we want to take a look at how the outcome uh, of, with the IS or the intersection of the IS and LM curve relate to this full employment level of output, which is really the key because that tells you where the pressure's on the 